seen the pan before, you know. I was living on Anna Street. Well, you know the storage trace, storage traces on Anna Street. So there are bank called Paradas. It was on lower Anna Street. They used to come up this trace plane. So I, I was in, enthralled by the song. I said, what is this? But my parents didn't allow me to go out and get close to it. As I got in Gavin, I spent, get back inside. I just got a little peek through mm -hmm. the holes in Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> But I remember. So that kind of wet my appetite. I said, no, I want to know about this thing. And he carried the hat, very much. We had Ellie made some pans. Yeah. So we went one day. Roy and myself and his father, he was a musician, a band leader. And he said, come on, uh, try to play. So we tried to play Blue Danny Boys. So you know what is Pam, 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 pam. <laughs> I got it, pam, pam. Whichever note you start on, I know right now, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> pam, pam, pam. I got the second one. And not for hell I could get the third note. I went all around the pan. I know the note was in the pan, but you know, we, I just can hear it. Yeah. So I gave up. I said, no, I'm finished with it. And, and, and I lost all interest in it. I said, yeah, I'll be no better. But so that day, passing my readers, we didn't intend to go in. So that happened just by accident. How was it? So when you started in with the Beatles at 12, mm -hmm. you started to arrange when? When I was uh, about 15. 15. So the first 15. song you ever arranged was? was a song called April Love. Well, you know, simple, you know. Simple song. You know, so. Yeah, simple thing. You're trying to see yeah. the feeling in the way out. And uh, I think it was a tune called Dream of Old Day. And then back in my arms, took me to 62. Carnival of 62. Mm -hmm. I was arranging a song to the band called uh, Dance of the Pipes. No, I am hearing, I had a lot of friends in St. James. Mm -hmm. uh, I see boy, this song, song I can sing music, you know? So I arranged the song and then playing it. And then one, day, one night I went in the other and I heard the last time. The last scene. You women who see music in the yard. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I didn't take it on at first. And it continued for a couple of nights. But I got so fed up. One I just put my sticks in my back pocket and I told her, yes, I skip it. I said, I wasn't upset. I realized if I'd stayed there, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't progress. Yeah. You see? So I left the band. And I used to go and get pounds from Ellie and things. It wasn't any vexation. And he realized too the frustration I was going through. Mm -hmm. Anything you do, you say, but how you could do that? I hear in it. Yeah, yeah. I'm feeling it. Yeah. I'm hearing it. They even brought Mr. Pierre one, one night there. Uh -huh. Mr. Lennox Pierre. You know what I'm Uh huh. Yeah, Mr. Uh -huh. Lennox Pierre. He used to do the classical music. And he wrote a test piece for the festival. He said, he brought Mr. Pierre. 
So yeah, check this one. See what? Give me first night, give me the second night. So I asked them, I see how does it sound? It sounds good. I say, well, what is the problem? <laughs> yeah, it sounds good. That's all you want. Mm -hmm. So after, so that plus the the, 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 the vibes thing, I say, well, I had you. I went mm -hmm. back and had them once to play festival when mm -hmm. you play at the night. So that's how I started off. And from then, we formed our little band here, just like you had your band mm -hmm. in Benari Street. Had a little band here. Mm -hmm. It was your friend Roy Robert was behind. Mm -hmm. I off and then Philo, who was the arranger for Starlet and leader, asked me if I could bring my band into Starlet. So I said, I have to think about that. You see, because you know, we don't have a band, we don't have any place to practice. The band didn't come out the previous year. I thought about it. Everybody said yes, except Roy Rock. <coughs> he said, we didn't leave in Vegas to go into Stalf. We could have our own band. Mm -hmm. He said, Stalf is a man of little confusion. He said, I don't want to go in and that. So he never came. He was the only person that never came. Mm -hmm. He still took some time to come and then he did. But at the time, all of when Panorama started, I didn't know what to do in Panorama. I, I didn't know a man of boy 19 years old. What mm -hmm. can I really know? <laughs> 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 Anthony Williams is the only person who had an idea. Mm -hmm. So, in 1966, I think I kind of laid on the form, the present form, of Panama the King, with a thing called Mass and Sub. We played in that song. 66? No, no, no. Mass and Sub. Why was it there? Yeah. yeah. So, so, that kind of laid on the form of Panama But we were playing Calypso's. Music. That is all we knew. The lip of everything is. If you look at the style of records, you go to hide the thing. Kitchener Sparrow, Kitchener Sparrow, Kitchener Sparrow, Kitchener yeah. Sparrow. You might find one tune, I might have picked up a pop tune or something. Yeah. You know? So that is how it was. The Calypsonian put out their music and we played it. So it became such a natural thing to them that, uh, you know, if you are accustomed doing something over and over and over, let somebody come and see do something different. It may, it may be that you are mad or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that is how it was. We were like the voices of the Calypsonian. We, we got to the people musically through, the Calypsonian got to the people through us. Mm. See, we played the songs and Sparrow even sponsored a record. He was so happy with how he used to do his music. He sponsored all these records. To take you now to closer to 1972 because we were 63. It was a great band and everything. Great. And we had one panorama in uh, 71. We won in 69. Mm -hmm. and then, yeah, and then we ran second with Panama. And then, so we had four good years. So I said to myself, if you want to change something, when you're at the top, is the best thing to do. Yes. You know? <laughs> More time to lie in the yard and play, fun and be around, you know. We just went with the flow. People were still coming around like they had nothing going on, just like what they're doing with this COVID here. Play about the place like it ain't, it ain't real. We were coming in the yard to listen, to look, because starting in those days was the band with harmonite going in all the fets. And when you look in the paper, starting for Fed Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, three, four in a week, the band splitting in two. I said, I don't like to, in my mind, I said, anytime I go to a Calypso tent, I never heard the same tune twice. Mm -hmm. Every person came, they sang something different. Mm -hmm. So I said, why is in the panyard, all the bands are playing the same song, mm -hmm. so, so, we, so we don't have a brain to, we as Calypso, we as pan men, we, we don't have a brain that we could try to do something, and I mean greatest, we could try it. So, I made that decision. I say, no matter what the heat I will get, I will try it. We had a meeting with Pantra and Vigo. 
on everybody and it was a unanimous decision let Starlet play their own team. You know why they said so? Because they thought I could write a good enough tune. They say yes, let Starlet play their own tune. In those days, preliminary had the Sunday and they had the North Final on the same day. North Final was decided on preliminaries. So as it turned out, Solo Hammer Knight and Starlet tied for first was the same result as the previous year with uh, Queen of the Bands and I think the Bermuda Girls. Right? The Bands tied in the final and they come back now in the North final tied again. And wanted to do his own composition. Now he had done about four own compositions in the band, but they were like state side tunes and we recorded them on vinyl on record. You know, sucking it in steel and other tunes. But then he decided to approach the band to do one for Panorama. And the band decided to give it a try. And it went down well with the members, but it didn't go down well with Rural Charles and some other members. Because when it came first in the North Zone, there was a talk about, oh, no tune that they play on the radio, nobody singing it. They kind of think I beat the body, Panorama, all they were struck up here and all that kind of long time thing. And the tune was placed in the final. Melody to Pancho and Bagel. And they said, Where are the lyrics? He said, I don't play lyrics, I play melody. And this is what I want to play. They said, No, no, no. For it to be a calypso and considered for competition, it has to have lyrics. Oh. So a member of his band by the name of Herschel Cochrane, deceased, was a good friend of mine. We used to get, a, get together at Carnival at Christmas time. He would play the pan, I would play the quattro, and a group of us would sing along and we'd have a good fun and so on. He knew that I, when I was at university, took part in the Calypso competition there, and in fact won in 1966. So he came to me and he said, we have this tune, and Pancho Bake was telling him it needs lyrics. You think you could write lyrics with? I said, I'm pretty certain I can. Besides, well, see what you could come up with a title and let us go from there. So when I thought about it, I said, this, what we're doing here is very avant-garde. And when I, um, my history tells me that he's trying to break this deadlock between Kitchen and Sparrow. So I came up with the first line, which was, Pan men in a dilemma, what you want to render, Sparrow or Kitchener? And um, I decided to call it Pan on the Move because I said, this is a progressive idea that Ray has. I gave it that name. And when I had finished writing and Herschel come, he said, I love it, I love it, I love it. But we need to have somebody. So they took the lyrics to Pan and go by the way. I said, where's the recording? You have to hear it because suppose there's a ballad you all write. We'd have to know that it's a calypso. So Herschel came back to me and said, well, when you know all these calypso, and see if you get one to sing it for us. I said, well, the tents open tonight. Let's take a move around. And I'll see if I get one of them to sing it. Actually, I'm telling you, I'm going to call her name. The first person we went to was Gypsy.
So you got to record that. That's the barrel. The one said we like to do it. Two nights after, the list came and said, bad news, I said, what happened? He said, Sparrow told the barrel, if you sing that tune, you can no longer sing in this tent. Oh. Right? So I said, the fight started there, they were fighting nasty. <laughs> I said, okay, that's uh, you know, something. I don't want to use the actual words Gypsy told us, but he really threw us up and cussed us out. And he said, I have so many songs all you could be playing, and all you could be playing Kitchen Sparrow, and I have good songs all you could play on the plan, but you're bringing this nonsense to me for. Every Calypsonian we went to, that was their reaction. We didn't know we were doing all of this. We were just trying to find somebody who would sing the song. And after a couple of nights of frustration, so what are we going to do? They were discussing in the yard and somebody in the yard said, listen, I, I know somebody at, Pan, at Radio Trinidad who could come in the yard and record it, but we just had to get somebody to sing it and the band could accompany them. So they all looked at me and they said, Alvin, you have to sing the song, you know. I said, what? They said, we have nobody else. This is exactly true. Somebody from Cambridge and recorder into the pan yard, right, I was at my home. And I sang the song and he recorded it. And we got a copy of the recording and we took it to Pantry and Bago. We didn't even play it on the air. We said, listen, this is the song. And they said, all right, all right. Enough, enough. You all allowed to play the song. And that is how they got permission from Pantry and Bago. Well, at that time, the name of the thing was, uh, I think it was the Pan Men's Association or something like that. When you got to the stage now, you're not stopping yeah. and count. No, you're playing right there. Yeah. So and so that now, I had loved that because I like music that have a vibe and people want to dance. So I tried to do that song in that vein. The country pan moving because they have a lot of panorama tunes that when you hear, if you play them like in a in a party scene or something, they have no vibe. <laughs> So I, I wanted to maintain the vibe of the pan and the movement, people dancing and so on, and at least from the same man. Mm -hmm. So that was why I chose Alvin, because I felt he was able to, he understood what I was trying to do. We didn't even know she was going to record it. We just heard this thing playing on the radio and we said, wow. And then we found out that she had made a 45. So I don't even know where the, and she would have to tell us if we could find her. What gave her the spark to say, I want to record this tune? Well, listen, that song, I love both, both the songs, eh? I love the renditions, okay? But that song, I cannot tell you too much about that song, but I'll tell you what, what I remember, okay? Now, I was at Sam Studio doing a recording. Sam Studio, that's on Coco Redia. I'm doing a recording. My, my first recording, as a matter of fact, my first recording, which was um, Sponsor Rama and the Work of a Woman. And um, for some reason, when I finished, or before I started my recording, Arthur Dikoto and Ashton Laukan, where he was my manager, Arthur Dikoto was the arranger for the boot song for Sponsorama and, and, and um, the work of a woman. So they asked me in the studio, because Tony Ricardo, I think is the voice that they had on first on that song, but I think they fell out through money. And since I was there, they asked me if I could sing the song. They gave me the lyrics. I can't remember who gave me the lyrics. I love the song, but I told them, I can't sing that song. That song is too high. That's a man's voice should be there. They deleted Tony's voice, and this song, the music was already prepared, but not for my key. So you hear how so high that song is? I asked them if they could do it over, do it over my key, but they said, no, they already recorded the music and everything, you know, so, 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 so. So they said, so sing the song, and uh, I studied it and stuff, and someday I came back and I, I put it down, and I didn't even know the words too good. I kind of eat up the words. But when I went to, 
to listen to that song when the first person called me. I went back to listen to that song and I'm tell I'm asking myself, Dan, did you sing that song? I don't know if I can make those notes now. The notes are so crisp and clear. What I don't know if I can make those high notes now. But I know that at that time, that song really was Tony Ricardo. But it was my first recording. That Pan on the Run and Pan on the Move was my first recording. I knew of, of Ray Holman, but I never met him. Uh, I know of him. He's a musician. He's a fan arranger. And he went to Queen's Royal College or somewhere like that. And, he, you know, he's internationally known and so forth and things. But I never met him. I don't know much about him. But they gave me the song at the same studio and they told me to learn the lyrics. I think I went back another time and put down the lyrics, but they, they, they couldn't do anything about the music anymore. So that's how it came about. Run. There was a, another clash. And here invaders came, and, you know, they came from behind us on Alpita Avenue, and they turned with us. As we turned, they turned. And then they ran into the band with, with, with uh, cutlasses and hammers and, you know, and sledgehammers, and they started to destroy the pans. So all of us ran, you know, because we didn't want to get hurt. We weren't prepared for that. And that must have been particularly distressing for you in a way, because it was your old band, wasn't it? It was my old band and my former protector. Birdie was the leader of the band, and uh, I was shocked. Out, out of my shock and disappointment, I got this tune right away. Pan on the run. You know. It was advantage. They went on the rampage. It was pan on the run, every man and woman. They say pan on the move. These pan men didn't approve. Big fight. Carnival Tuesday night. The second year of pan on the run, that mm. honor came to me. Ray came and he brought his pan on the pavement right outside my house, four houses from him. And he said, well, you have to hear this one. And we literally wrote the chorus together on the pavement. And particularly when he said, oh, you come in at me next year, you come in again with a new refrain. <laughs> and other pan men, I'm sure, <laughs> will try and compose a score. They best stop sleeping and do their own thing. That to me was his song. Yeah. Was yes, sir. Yeah. You see, don't doubt it. You see that man, I write the words. We sang the chorus together before we left him. And I wrote the rest of the song literally in 24 hours. Muzi Sharp and the other people who went and formed phase two were the main supporters of it. When Ellie Manet went on the voice of youth, in 1948 to play a ping pong solo for the first time. He did not make up a tune to play. He did not celebrate the pan with its own take on Western music. No, he played Brahms lullaby. And it took Ray Holman to come along. And he it was that thought that we could take the thing a little further and make up something that would be both of the pan, for the pan, and at the same time be music which Western ears would recognize with respect. It was a struggle, it was a struggle the first, the first time. You know, because I see our intention was to go away and then the people come about the mass and they say, man, you're going far, you know? But the experience, because people say, what are you going to ask to finish? Well, you see, one problem is going to do one soon thing, you know? 
And another believe in something, you stick with it. You stick, you stuck with it. It, 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 it was so nice, and we are all Panyard is present here, is where we started off. And, and in that Panyard, them days, plenty of them working on things. So the line is in Panyard, the playing yard, the eating, the practicing. Some people are living far, and they stay in the yard. And they are fed up all over the rest. And everybody wants to have their own conversation. Thing. And I, I think that was a great thing that you did. They stand up for, and what you, what you create, because Kaiso didn't have the music. Well, you can't do that too, and you hear anybody say, you okay, so you want to do your own thing, you know? It's like you put, you have a letter, and you put a stamp on it. Mm. And some people look at the stamp, and they, they see nothing in it. But he saw yeah. so what the stamp meant. Yeah. 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 And then people look at yeah. this one. So yeah. you add, what do you add to the stamp? Yeah? <laughs> At the Panorama Finals, I think Ken played Fire Down Below and so did Phase 2. And they tied. And I recall um, Len Booksy, Dr. Booksy Shop now, saying 
um, on the radio that he appreciated other arrangers playing his music, um, but he would encourage them to do their own, which was a good thing because I think it, it motivated Ken to do that, do his own. I recall clearly the evening this just came about and um, I remember c coming into the house and he said to me, Jenny, I have this piece of music in my head and I recorded it because I don't want to forget it. He played it. He played it because he was getting ready to go do the arrangement for Pan Snatchers or Snatchers at the time. And as he played it, my response immediately was, wow, Ken, that's Pan by Storm. And it just took off from there. He left and he went on to um, rehearsal. And by the time he came back to the house, I wrote first, first, and the chorus. I know now, I learned from Bui Hoffman. So before I talk again, I just want to thank you. Right for you opening your arms to me, like that. To be installed to play your music. Because as a little boy, I, I, I do a little arrangement until I little side home. But it was nothing structured, I saw it was a nice head. Right. You know? But being on the real man, I don't know the structure I could uh, through the change key and all these different things and on the time we spent there. It was it, it, it was, was such a beautiful feelings. Because there's the music this man creating and we fell in love with that. And I fell in love with that and I was just tell you thank you so much. Very gifted person in in terms of spinning melodies and developing the melody into a full arrangement. I remember the year he played um, he did the arrangement for the bull. I used to listen to it from my house. He had a little trick he used to use. He never would arrange his song by saying, this is the verse, this is the chorus, this is the introduction, and so on. Yeah. He'd just come in the yard and say, we all play this part over and over, and he'd give them the part. Then he'd give them another part, and they don't know where it's fitting in. And then one night, I got the I got the news that he could have put the whole song together. Now I know all the parts because I keep listening. Yeah. And then this special night about two o'clock in the morning, I'm laying down in my bed and I'm listening. And I hear the intro, I say, oh, that was the introduction. That's the first verse. Oh, that's the change key. And today it has helped me to analyze a band yeah. too, because I used to listen how he structured the different parts of an arrangement and put them together in a particular sequence. And he would never teach them the ending until they reach on the drag. And I used to go next to the pub because I want to hear the special ending he's going to put on. And he had these little tricks because he didn't want nobody to steal his ideas. You know, that's how it was in the old days. Do no doubting, we sit down and write me own song. No reject, we own self so we could run town. When you hear it, you will get it in the groove. But it's gonna be moved. Yeah. 
错。by being taught how easy it is to substitute new shibboleths for old. And on that cautionary note, I want to commend all of those who have participated in this next round of the march towards full and complete pan-music literacy, pan-education, pan history and all that is fundamental to this kind of lucky break which we in this godforsaken little island have been allowed a glimpse of. This is our promise now and I ask God tonight not to let us ignore that.
someone write me your song. to see we blood flow on the street sweet music in the place woman shaking the waist they mash up we turn our and throw down the bass we they want to spoil after months of toil we can't take the strain ever again all this got to end or next year someone go get bent it was advantage we went on the rampage it was pan on the run Every man and woman They say pan and we move These pan men didn't approve Big fight And a val Tuesday night of hard work and after all you do still end up broke tuning pan till it's sweet standing up on your feet parading two days and nights up on the street when out of the blue men attacking you with bottle and stone leave you to moon trying to stop this mess or next year someone will get blessed it was advantage they went on the round it was pan on the run, every man on the man, they say pan on the roof, these pan men they approve, big fight, carnival Tuesday night. 